Hello, this cup arrived broken and with missing part of handle. We're going to focus on the handle, how to make a handle with clay without needing a kiln and firing. Um, I'm rolling the clay on a piece of wood by a sink. I'm going to use a technique that's called pulling a handle. Um, I'm going to get it wet and pull it from different direction while applying the right pressure in the right places to create the shape and the dimensions the handle needs. The clay is very soft now. I'm going to place it with the right angle to dry a bit to a texture that feels like Swiss cheese or chocolate. Once it's hardened a bit, uh, and still can be cut and bent a bit. I'm cutting it to size, fitting it. It can still be squeezed if it needs if it's too big. Then I'm bending it to to the right location. You let it dry a little bit so it'd be a little bit harder. But don't let it dry too much because the clay shrink as it's dry and it's going to lose its dimensions. At this point it can be fired in the kiln and then it needs to be filled in because it would shrink. This prevents the filling. I'm smoothing it with water. And let it dry further. And here it is. The next step is to take an impression of the clay, but yeah, the, uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm uh, putting hand cream on the handle and in my hands, so the casting rubber would not stick to my hands and to the handle. Mix it really, really well. This is fast forward, so I'm not doing it that fast. Uh, then you apply it. The clay is a little bit soft still, so be careful apply gently make sure you squeeze everywhere so it would take proper impression once it's cured a few hours later you take it off and the trick here is to take the clay out without damaging the mold and here it is I'm using rubber band to make sure that it's tight in uh, so the uh, casting resin would not leak. Uh, one of the holes need to be plugged in so it won't pour from the other side. Make sure you make a small hole for air to escape as you're pouring the casting resin. Casting resin is two parts um, placed on a scale. I'm resetting it and measuring it again. And mix it really well. And here's the pouring. After a period of time, we need cures. It's better get cure, the curing done better at 140 degrees, but room temperature would be sufficient. Uh, here I'm taking it out, and I got the general shape. There's some imperfection parts that I need to grind off. Using some sandpaper. The, this one is 220 grit. And trying it on, it's a little bit too long. Uh, I can write it on the uh, finder here. That's one side. Everything is fast forward here, so it doesn't happen that fast. Um, then now uh, to attach it, I need to put a metal peg on the handle because it's a load bearing item, um, the epoxy itself might not be sufficient for long term durability. Here's a peg, it's a piece of metal that I'm cutting to an oval shape. I'm trying it on. And uh, then I'm doing the other side. Same thing, it's a diamond disc on a drill. Wear a mask. 
this dust is not too healthy for you. It fits well, and the next step is to put um, epoxy, two parts epoxy, five minutes cure. Uh, placing the epoxy on both sides. And it fits, let it uh, cure for a while, probably a couple of hours at least. And then you fill up all the cracks and, and the gaps with PC11 epoxy. Uh, mixed well, of course. And then that's the rest of the cracks filled in and wiped off with 91% alcohol uh, using a cotton cloth. And then sending it to, to, to accept the Kintsugi application. We're using 23.5 carat gold and here it is, it's already to be shipped to a customer. For more lessons, uh, go to our website, lexsitepottery.com. Thank you for listening.